What is up, family? God is good. You better be giving him all the praise. You already know it. Uh, sorry it's taking me so long to get back another video to you guys, but I have some awesome news. Uh, my brother Zach has decided to start recording some videos as well. Um, he's already started recording this new series that he's putting together. I'm really excited to see it. All those will be posted on this channel, and we're also going to be doing... Uh, a lot of um, discussion videos as well so we'll be able to put out more content for you guys at least every week maybe maybe a couple times a week so you won't have to wait so long for videos from now on god willing so i ran into my friend cat who follows this channel at linwood's rally that my brother and i performed at hey cat and she asked me how i was doing with all the cancel culture stuff and then i realized that I had not updated you guys on my situation, so I didn't want you guys to worry about me, um, what was going on. For those of you that are new to the channel, my brother and I went to Jan um, DC on January 6th. We were at the Capitol. We were not one of the idiots that uh, broke into the Capitol, but we were there, uh, so people found out that we were there, and next thing we knew, uh, people were calling up every place that we played at and getting us canceled. Um, I lost about 90 to 95 percent of my business in a matter of like two days. Um, my brother lost about all, almost all of his, if not all of it, uh, in the same amount of time. It was pretty crazy. But to give you guys an update, God is good. And he always takes care of his, his people. Daddy's got this, y'all. Daddy's got this. We don't have to worry about anything. And it was a pretty amazing experience because I'm looking at my calendar. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills because I'm not. I made, honestly, in January and February, I think I made like six, seven hundred dollars or something like that total. And if God wasn't so good, I wouldn't have made it out but that's the thing we don't have to worry about it we don't have to worry about anything the devil can take everything away from us but if we just keep faith in god and know that he's got this he's got something worked out he will turn all those bad situations into something good and if you remain faithful to him through all the bad stuff no matter what it is you're going to come out even better on the other side so that's the, that's it. You know, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my business has come back to about maybe 60% of what it was or so. Um, I'm not getting rich, but all my bills are paid, and I'm comfortable, and I'm happy, and God is good. So thank you guys for uh, all your prayers and everything. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love you. So in the last video, we talked about a palindrome that I've been seeing a lot, uh, 121, which is 11 times 11. Uh, a lot of people been seeing 1111 for the last few years. I'm still seeing it a lot. I don't. I know you're seeing it. Uh, a friend of mine who watches the channel I spoke to the other day, him and his friends or people that he know are seeing 11s all over the place. They're seeing multiples of 11s all over the place. People have been seeing 1111 for a while. Remember, 11 has dual meanings, both the positive and the negative. And the negative spiritually speaking 11 means chaos or disorder and positive spiritual meaning is heroes rising we also learned in the last video that 11 11 means a call to faith and that all makes sense because i really believe that we're headed towards a time of chaos and i'll explain more of that about that in a minute but we're i believe that we're heading towards a time of chaos in which heroes will arise and we are we are going to have our faith tested so just like when i got canceled and i had to remain faithful and god took care of it we're going to go through a period of time where it might get ugly it might get scary but we have to remain faithful and know that god's going to take care of it daddy's got this y'all don't forget he's got it he's almighty he's got a plan we don't have to worry about it just trust the plan and go along with it and just remain faithful and when we get to the other side it's going to be awesome and i can't wait so if you see 11 11 or 121 and it come and god brings it to your mind hey there's 11 11 or 121 just know that it means that 
to, to just continue to have faith. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The, the devil is an illusionist. He likes to create fear. He likes to create an illusion that will cause fear or anger and cause you and make you do what he wants you to do, which is to be fearful and full of anger and hate and ultimately full of pride is what he wants. Because if you have those things inside of you, it means you're disconnected from God. God is love. If you have fear, then you don't have love. Uh, you're outside of God's love. So if you have anger, you're outside of God's love. If you have pride, you're outside of God's love. So pray about those things and make sure that you don't have any of those things in you. We're going to talk about a little, a little bit about that more as this video goes along. But I wanted to talk about uh, the number 1221 again because God has given me more revelation through this number. It's so amazing how God speaks to us if we ask for it ask for wisdom ask for god to reveal the things that he wants you to know ask him to show you what you need to see those are prayers that we should be praying y'all ask for it ask and ye shall receive seek and ye shall find knock and the door will be open um but those doors don't open if we don't knock we don't find it if we're not seeking it, we don't get it if we don't ask for it. So make sure that you're talking to the Father and asking Him for these things and, and actively, actively pursuing what God wants and what He wants you to know. It's amazing. He will, he will blow your mind if you just pray those little prayers. It's so easy to just pray the little prayers, but we forget to do that. We forget to talk to the Lord. We forget to ask for things. And we just sit back and expect things to happen. They're not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. So talk to God. Ask Him for this stuff. So He has revealed more to me through this number 1221. Um, for those of you who are new to this channel, if you want to know what I'm talking about, 1221, go back, watch episodes 23 through 27 and episode 33. It will be really blow your mind and again you might like episodes seven and eight too i think those are great they don't have anything to do with 1221 but they're really cool i think you'll find them fascinating so we know that 1221 means daddy where did i get that from well if you convert 1221 to letters one is a two is b so one two two one is a b b a which is Abba, which means daddy in Hebrew. So if you see 1221, daddy's trying to get your attention. You need to pay attention. Ask him to, sh if you see 1221, ask him to show you what he wants you to know. And since he's daddy, that means that we need to be more like children. And this is exactly what Jesus taught. Matthew 18:3. Verily or truly I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you read that verse? How many times have you read that verse and just passed right over it and not really given it any thought? Jesus said, if we don't humble ourselves as little children, then we're not going to heaven. You think that might be something that's kind of important to know? I mean, I have read over that verse hundreds of times and never really pondered on it, ne never really sought out the meaning of what Jesus was saying there. But it's kind of important if you want to go to heaven, you have to humble yourself as a child in order to get to heaven. I don't know if you guys remember the story about um, that lady prophesying over me that day. If you don't, I'll tell you again real quick. I was at church one day after church. A friend of mine of the church invited me over um, to lunch at his house to fellowship with some other members of the church. I already had plans that, that day, so I said, you know, thank you for inviting me, but maybe next time. And for whatever reason, why I was um, saying I couldn't make it. I checked my phone to see what time it was. Lo and behold, it was 1221. And I'm like, huh. But I said, I, you know, maybe next time. I left, got in my car, drove off, started thinking about 1221. I knew it was a sign. Um, and the spirit was like, you need to go. So 
I canceled my plans and I went. And let me tell you something. If your plans don't align with God's plans, you need to cancel your plans. Um, and I knew that that's what I had to do that day. I needed to cancel my plans and stop doing what I wanted to do to go and do what God wanted me to do and be where God wanted me to be. So I did and I went and it was a good time. About an hour into it, a lady said, can I pray for you? I feel like you're here for a reason and I need to pray for you. And I, of course I said yes, because I already knew I was supposed to be there. I didn't know why, but I just knew I was supposed to go. And so I was just exercising faith and going where I was supposed to go, not knowing why I was supposed to go there. Anyway, she prayed over me. She prophesied a few things over me. And when she was done, um, she said, I need to take you somewhere. I was like, okay, I'm going with it. Um, and she took me to this playground and she told me that God said, um, you lost your inner child and you need to get it back. And she got me to go swing on the swing. She said that God said that we needed to go swing on a swing. And uh, I didn't know what it meant at the time, but I've gotten some revelation about that. And it's amazing how God keeps revealing more and more how we need to be like children. We need to get our inner child back. And he's using this number 1221 to, to um, connect it all for me. Um, because I would have never went over there and gotten this message from her if I didn't see the number 1221. I would have went and continued with my plans that I had made. But since I saw 1221, the Holy Spirit could con to move me to go over there and learn that I needed to be more like a child, which is exactly what Jesus was teaching. I didn't get it at the time. I didn't really get it until I saw that 1221 means daddy and it kind of just went boom like oh we need to be more like children we need to let daddy be daddy and and when then i started thinking about what jesus taught about humbling ourselves as little children and it just started it, it was just a game changer for me so jesus said we have to humble ourselves as little children but what is different about little children compared to us. How are they different? Well, they're innocent. They don't see race. They don't see status. They don't judge people. They forgive really easily. They don't hold grudges. They don't have anger. They don't seek to hurt people. They don't worry about things. They're all faith. They don't live in the past or in the future. They live in the moment that they're in, which is exactly where God wants us to be. Their love is pure. It hasn't been corrupted yet. Children are their true selves. So what happened to them? Why did they stop being like children? And what caused them to forget who they, who they were and lose their inner child? Well, long story short, their parents screwed up. Let's be honest. That's what happened. Their parents, and unknowingly, I might add, gave them or caused them to inherit the spirits of fear, anger, jealousy, insecurity, pride, you name it, whatever it was that their parents had, they pass it on to their children. Now, anger, fear, pride, these things are not mere emotions. It's really important that we understand that. They are actually demonic entities. They are spirits. God even calls fear a spirit. He said that, that the Bible says uh, that God does not give us the spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. And if you submit to the, to the spirits, then it can get inside of you. So don't submit to these spirits. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. They're not emotions. The emotion is just evidence of demonic manipulation. And in severe cases, maybe even demonic possession. The negative emotions are a sign that, hey, I'm being... I'm being influenced by a demon right now. And once you notice that, the game gets a lot easier because then you know how to deal with it. You just rebuke them in the name of Jesus and they got to go. Um, it's really amazing. I, there's been a few times in my life where I have just felt terrible, like anxious or whatever. And I'm like, all of a sudden I was like, uh, 
Maybe I should just, maybe this is a demon. I should rebuke it. And there have been a few times where I have rebuked it. And then, and then it was like, uh, it was like the clouds went away and peace came over me. And you could literally feel it. You could just literally feel it leave you. And you just get this sense of peace all like that. It's really amazing to have a whole lot of anxiety. I mean, like really bad and rebuke it. And it's just gone like that. Rather than try to fight it yourself, you can't fight it yourself, guys. You cannot fight this yourself. You cannot do it yourself. You can't do it your way. You have to let go and give it to God. Let Daddy take care of it. And just follow Him. But these are not emotions that we're dealing with. They're demons. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and heavenly places. We're talking about fallen angels and demons here. If you don't know the difference between fallen angels and demons, I will explain it to you real quick. So you know what an angel is. A uh, fallen angel is one that has defected from God and they, they fell from you know, they fell away from God, and now they work for Satan. Some of these angels came to earth and reproduced with women, as it's written in Genesis chapter 6. The offspring of these angel-human hybrids are known as Nephilim. These were the giants, like Goliath. When these half-angel, half-human hybrids die, their spirits don't go to heaven, and they don't go to hell. They roam the earth. These are what are known as demons and they they play they try to act like they're something that they're not for example they might try to act like they're ghosts um, they might try to act like a dead family member that's coming back to visit you um, they might try to act like d uh, aliens sometimes um, but they're demons And every negative emotion has a class of demons that is assigned to that emotion. Fear, depression, anxiety, um, pride, uh, you name it. Whatever, jealousy, uh, hatred, they all have a demon that's assigned to that emotion and that is what that demon does it was so you'll have demons that play your anger you have demons that play your fear that's what they do they're not allowed to do um more things well i don't know if they're not allowed to do more than that or if they can't do more than that but it's one or the other they only do one thing so we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. That is our fight. We're battling demons, not people. We need to know this. Our parents did not know this. They didn't know that they were being played by demons. They didn't know any better when they gave us these spirits of fear and anxiety and insecurity and anger and jealousy and hate. They didn't know that they were doing all those things to us. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't do it. They literally could not help themselves. They were under a spell. They were living in the illusion outside of reality and they, they couldn't help themselves. So what happens is the influence of those demonic spirits get passed on to the children. The children start to judge and hate the parents and resent them for not giving them the godly love that they were supposed to. This is the beginning of their downfall. Satan loves to go after the children because if he can get them as children, he's probably got them for the rest of their lives. So then as children, pride enters in, anger enters in, fear enters in, etc., etc., etc. Whatever the parents were, that's what the children will become. And this is what causes them to lose their inner child and forget who God created them to be. They become like the parents, they grow up, they have children of their own, and the cycle starts all over again. So how do you break this cycle? You have to forgive your parents. We've talked about this over and over again. A lot of people have not reached out to me yet who are watching these videos. A lot of you need to forgive your parents and you don't even know it. 
If you if you feel led by the Spirit to learn more about forgiveness, message me. All my contact information is in every video that I post. I'm here to, to help you guys. That's that's really the main the main um, message I'm trying to get through these videos is to connect to God and, and you can't do that until you forgive. You really can't. So message me. Why is forgiveness so important? Well, just like Jesus said, if we don't humble ourselves as little children, we will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. He also said that if you don't forgive, then God won't forgive you. You cannot go to heaven if you do not forgive. Churches simply do not emphasize this enough, and it is a prerequisite to being a Christian. You cannot go to heaven if you don't forgive. It's so important that when the disciples asked Jesus, hey, how do we pray? He put forgiveness, the, he taught forgiveness in the prayer that he told us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He put it in the prayer. Forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. And after he was done showing them that prayer, he re-emphasized forgiveness. And look what he says. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You can't go to heaven if you're not forgiven. You have to forgive in order to be forgiven. This is so important. Guys, please take this seriously. Pray about it. Say, God, do I need to forgive somebody? Show it to me. You better pray that prayer. And if the Spirit moves you to message me, we can get on the phone. We can talk about it. I'll help you figure it out. But this is not a game. You have to forgive or you will not go to heaven. And this wasn't the only time Jesus talked about this. You remember the parable of the king and the and the servant, and he owed the king all this money, and the king wanted to throw him in jail, and he, the guy was like crying, Oh, please, please, I pro promise, I promise I'll pay you everything. And the king had compassion on him and forgave him the debt. And then he went out, and this other guy owed him a little bit of money, and he wouldn't forgive him, had him thrown in jail. And what happened... What happened to him after that? The king found out about it and threw his behind in jail. If we don't forgive, we're going to get thrown in jail. And it's not a jail you want to be in. Think about it. Forgiveness is one of the things that we need to do in order to humble ourselves and be as little children. In order to get back to that inner child that we were, the which is actually the person that God created us to be. In order to get back to that inner child, we have to forgive the people that Satan used to rob us of our inner child. And those people are almost always the parents, and more often than not, it's the mother. And it's hard to see that a lot of times because um, it's really easy to see how dad messed up. You know, when dad's mess up, it's out in the open and it's not hidden. It's really easy to see. But when mom's mess up, it's more hidden. It's more um, deceptive, for lack of a better term. But I think that's probably the best term I could come up with. It's harder to see where mom messes up. And a lot of times we go through our whole lives and not realizing that we need to forgive our moms because we couldn't see it. Uh, one of the biggest lies that Satan has ever told, um, or one of, the, one of the most deceiving things that Satan has ever done was hide the fact that we need to forgive people. We go through our lives, we don't realize that we need to forgive. We don't realize that we need to forgive our, our parents, so we need to forgive our mom. We have no idea, and we're walking around in a state of unforgiveness, and that's the source of all of our inward uh the way we feel the, the things that make us feel bad the make us things that make us do stupid things that we're not supposed to be doing the things that make us seek out pleasures 
in order to numb the pain, uh, to make ourselves feel better, for it to only last for a, for a moment, and then we go back to feeling like crap again, and then we have to go back and seek that pleasure again to make ourselves feel better again. It's just a cycle, and you just dig yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into a pit. It's unforgiveness. It's not humbling yourself. Don't let the devil trick you into not seeing that you need to forgive. Pray about it. You have to get back to your inner child. You have to forgive. And some, some of you might have to forgive more than your parents. Some people have to forgive other people in their childhood that have done really, really horrible things to them. And it, and it can be hard to bring yourself to that point where you want to forgive somebody that has done something to you that is just so evil. And you really have to humble yourself to get to that point. But let me tell you something. Forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. And not forgiving someone does not, it's not payback to that person. It only hurts you. It doesn't hurt them. You think that not forgiving somebody or holding a grudge against someone is going to pay them back? That is a lie. That is an illusion from Satan to keep you where he wants you so he can continue to manipulate you for the rest of your life and ultimately bring you straight to hell. You have to forgive. It's not for them. It's for you. You will not be free until you forgive. You tired of feeling that way? You tired of getting angry? You tired of being afraid? You tired of feeling insecure? You tired of feeling stress and anxiety? You need to forgive. You have to humble yourself and forgive and get your inner child back. Message me. When you don't forgive, it's because of pride. Not forgiving someone is judging them and saying, I'm better than you. Uh... You're a piece of crap. I'm not. I can't believe you did that to me. And it makes it all about yourself, which it's supposed to be all about God, right? So when you don't forgive someone, you're you are you have let pride into yourself and you're judging them. And let me tell you something, none of us have a right to judge anybody like that. There is a right way to judge and there's a wrong way to judge. The problem is that most judgment comes from a position of pride. And that is the thing we have to rid ourselves of. When you're not forgiving someone, when you're holding a grudge against someone, it is because of pride. It's evil. And we, can, we have to stop doing that. Holding a grudge against someone, I heard someone say it like this, that holding a grudge against someone is like drinking poison and hoping that they die. And I could not think of a more perfect analogy than that. It only hurts you. It's, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Jesus told us to forgive. We're supposed to forgive everyone for anything and everything that they have done to us. He did not give any exceptions. Jesus didn't say, forgive men your trespasses unless they did this to you. There is no exceptions. If you do not forgive, then you can't go to heaven. And Satan knows this. So what does he do? When you're a child, he makes bad things happen to you. So he can draw you into a state of unforgiveness. So God won't forgive you. And you live the rest of your life disconnected from daddy. That's why, that's why things are so messed up. So this is really the revelation that God gave to me concerning 1221 and um, the fact that it means daddy's talking to me. Daddy's talking to you. And it's not necessarily forgiveness, but it is humbling ourselves. It's about humbling ourselves. And forgiveness is an avenue to make that happen. But we have to humble ourselves. The opposite of being humble is pride. We have to rid ourselves of the pride. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty or an arrogant spirit before a fall. Pride leads to destruction. Pride leads to falling. If you don't rid yourself of this pride and do what God wants you to do, you will 
fall, and ultimately you are on a path that leads to destruction. God hates pride. It is of the utmost importance for us to get every ounce of pride out of us so we can become like little children. We're supposed to be, you're supposed to be a child of God, not an adult of God, a child of God. We are supposed to be like like our inner child, the, the, the person that God created us, created us to be. We lost that. We got to get it back. When I received this revelation, um, that in order to get my inner child back, I had to do what Jesus said and humble myself as a little child. I immediately prayed. I was like, Father, um, I don't want pride. Please forgive me of any pride. Um, I repent of it. I rebuke it. And show me what you need to show me to get rid of it. Take it away from me. Whatever needs to happen, I don't want an ounce of pride inside of me. I don't want it. Take it away from me. And let me tell you something. <clears throat> ever since I've done that, ever since I prayed that prayer and started praying that prayer, my life has changed significantly. I mean, I already thought my life was good. But now it's just like all I've been doing is leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. It's so amazing. Pride blocks you from reaching where God wants you to go. And once you once you start to address it, it opens up doors and gates and everything where God can lead you into amazing places. I'm playing music the best that I've ever played in my life. Um new songs are coming to me i'm i'm writing like awesome new stuff and music that i've never even played before um i love more uh i'm making better connections with people the people that i already know um our relationships are getting better i mean it's just so amazing when god when you allow god to take away your pride when you humble yourself and become like a like a little child, it's amazing how awesome life can be. I mean, I'm more at peace. I mean, it's just so amazing how much better my life is because of this. Now, I suggest that you do this. I suggest that you do this prayer. And as a matter of fact, we're just going to do it together. If the Spirit leads you to do this, bow your head and close your eyes and pray this prayer with me and mean it. And it will change your life. I'm telling you. So bow your head. Father, I know that I am supposed to humble myself as a little child. Please help me. I can do nothing unless you are with me. Please forgive me of my pride. I don't want it anymore. Show it to me. Help me overcome it. Take it away from me. Whatever needs to happen, let it be. I do not want one ounce of pride inside of me anymore. I, rep I repent of it. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Take it away from me, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I really hope that you prayed that prayer with me. If you didn't and you change your mind later, I'm going to post that prayer in the description below. You can come back and read it and say it to yourself, whatever. I really hope that you prayed that prayer because it is a life changer. It is a game changer. And it's probably, the I think, maybe the biggest message that God is trying to teach us right now. This whole, um, how do I say it without getting blocked? Let's call it disease you know, the thing that happened last year that shut everything down. That whole thing, this whole election mess, everything that's going on, God is trying to humble his people. That's why we haven't had a breakthrough yet. That's why God hasn't come down here and fixed everything yet. Because we, ha we still have pride. We have to get rid of our pride first. We'll get more on that in a second. Pride is a deceiver. 
Your pride will get in the way of you realizing that you have pride. You will think that you don't have pride because you have pride. That's how much of a deceiver it is. You need to pray about it. You need to ask God to show you, God, if I have any pride in me, show me. Take it away from me. I don't want it. I don't want it. you got to pray that prayer, guys. It's so important. I really think it's the biggest problem in the world. And that's why God hasn't come and fixed everything yet. Check this out. 2 Chronicles 7.13. This is God speaking. If I shut up heaven that there is no more rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, that's disease, you know what I'm talking about, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name, that's Israel, that's Christians, if my people that are called by my name shall what? Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is what has to happen first before God comes back and heals this land. We have to humble ourselves and pray. This is exactly what Jesus was talking about. We have to get rid of our pride. We have to humble ourselves as little children, and we have to pray. And what did Jesus say when he told us how to pray? To forgive. Isn't that amazing? It's, such a, it's so simple. It's been right in front of our face the whole time, and we didn't even see it because we had pride. Our pride got in the way of us seeing that we have pride. It's... I wish I would have seen it sooner. I'll just say that much. So Second Chronicles says that we have to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. And then he will come and fix everything. So what has to happen in order for his people, which are called by his name, to humble themselves and seek his face and pray and turn from their wicked ways? Well... Unfortunately, most people don't turn to God unless things are really bad. And when I see this revelation about pride, about humbling ourselves that God has shown me, and he's also shown me 1111 and 121, which means chaos and disorder and heroes rising, I put those together. That's why I believe that we have chaos coming around the corner. The purpose of this is two just like 1111 has a positive and a negative um, meaning this chaos that will come this disorder that will come is also has a positive and a negative in the negative it's satan's plan to destroy in the positive god will use this chaos to humble his people and they will get down on his knee on their knees and they will pray and they will seek God and they will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. And then you know what happens at that point? God comes down, drops the hammer and says, that's enough. That's all he's waiting on, guys. He's waiting on us to let go of our pride, to swallow our pride, to sacrifice our ego. That is the sacrifice that we're supposed to make. We're supposed to be a living, a living sacrifice. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. You have to sacrifice your ego. You have to get rid of your pride. And when we do that as a people, then it's game over. So it starts with each one of us. It starts with me. It starts with you. Pray that prayer and get rid of that pride and then help other people to, to get rid of their pride. Because the faster we do that, the sooner we do that, the sooner God can come and fix everything. And once we get on the other side of this chaos, it is going to be amazing. And you want, you really want to address your pride before the chaos comes, if you can. When you when we enter this time of chaos, and I hope I'm wrong, okay? I could be wrong about this chaos thing coming. 
I hope I'm wrong. But if I'm not, then when we enter this chaos, it's going to be a whole lot easier to deal with if you've already dealt with and taken the pride out of you, if you've already forgiven, if you're already um, connected to God the way you're supposed to be, and you have the faith that you're supposed to have, this that chaotic time period is not going to be that bad for you. It's going to be worse for the people that are disconnected from God, and they're living in fear, and in anger, and in hate, and in pride, and ultimately they're living in an illusion. That's really what's going to mess them up, is the illusion. Get out of the illusion. Come out of it. Sacrifice your ego. Let go of your pride before the chaos comes so we can help other people get through it. All right. This is our job right now, to help people connect to God, to help them humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. All right. We're not better than them. We're just doing what God wants us to do. That's it. All right. We none of us have lived a perfect life, so let's not act like we're better than anybody else. That's pride. So now that's what I see when I see 1221. It doesn't just mean that daddy's trying to get my attention. It doesn't mean it doesn't only mean that daddy's got this. It also means we got to get rid of our pride. So I think about all those things now when I see 1221. I'm like, Daddy's trying to get my attention. Humble myself as a child. We have to maintain it because just just because let's say you let's say today you go forgive your parents and you get pride out of you. Um, that doesn't mean that pride can't enter back into you tomorrow. It's something that we need to stay on top of for the rest of our lives and and actively seek you know what God wants us to do with our lives. We have to maintain that sense of forgiveness. We have to maintain that state of humility. And humble ourselves. We have to maintain that childlike um, being that we're supposed to be. So remind yourself of it and do it. Say the prayer. Connect to God. And we don't have to worry about anything because God, Daddy's got this. But if you're not in a state of forgiveness, if you have pride, are you a child of God? Are you really? Have you been born again? If you're not like a child... Don't you think that's what being born again means, is to become a child? Aren't you a child when you're born? So we really need to humble ourselves and get rid of this pride. I love you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Share this with your friends. If you want to show the channel some love, you can do that. All the info is in the description below. Um, got some more videos coming for you all very soon. Hit me up if you want to know more about forgiveness. I'm here for you. I love you guys. Get rid of your pride. Let go. Sacrifice your ego. Humble yourself as a child. And there's some really good stuff coming just beyond the horizon. Love you guys. I'll see y'all soon.